Ladies and gentlemen, um, back to anaesthesia. I'm afraid I've got uh, an awful lot in this section and I can just dip into a few interesting topics in it. There's an awful lot in the report and I'd commend it to you completely. Um, I uh, am personally grateful for having had the opportunity to work on NAP5, have the privilege of patients' reports of that sort of detail that Mike's been describing. Um, I'm sure practice all the people on the committee will have been changed as a result of being on the, on, involved in the study. Um, and we wouldn't have that information without the local coordinators' <coughs> actions and the reporting clinicians. So um, please bear that in mind when you're reading the individual reports in the overall report. Um, and for those of your colleagues that you go back to and describe the meeting who don't find time or uh, that may be in some places the belief to believe to read the manual, um, I can commend the single page report in the bulletin in September as an explanation of why the study took place. So the phases, uh, this is a new word for me as well, don't worry. Um, it's not a difficult concept to have the idea that there are dynamic phases in the anaesthetic practice and hopefully more stable processes during the operative procedure, surgical or otherwise. Um, that's essentially all that's in the definition. Um, and it's important to remember that the panels that sat on a monthly basis over the whole year were trying to allocate the individual patient responses into these different groups. There was some minor overlap on occasion. But um, there's been, there has been human brain involved in the allocation. Um, in addition, we extracted the patient experience and an idea of causation, whether it was an avoidable set of factors or not, and an overall assessment of the quality of care, which wasn't designed to be completely judgmental, but just an indication of... Um, kind of helping to answer the questions about whether uh, reversing neuromuscular blockade at the end of the case represented an overall practice quality. Uh, so before uh, the start of uh, NAP5, my expectation from an awareness was a patient in agony, couldn't move, lasting a long time, bound to have some awful, awful consequences psychologically. and. Um, the detail of this study uh, has done more. So the brief recollections... Um, patients reporting biting. The important bit in this extract is that it's, the experience lasted about a minute. Now, that's the patient's assessment, and we all know that patient's assessment of time under anaesthesia is something that's altered. Um, but to have significant psychological morbidity following a bit of your practice that lasts a minute is, um, is enlightening. So expectations of other people in the audience might be the fact that all studies and publications previously have really focused on the maintenance phase of anaes general anaesthesia uh, because that's stable and accessible and um, the most useful outcome for me from this study is the first line uh, in bold where half of the events selected with enough detail um, were before the patient ever got into theatre. third of the reports are in what we might think of a classical zone and then a significant minority at the end of the case. And it's tempting to think that having got the patient to the end of a difficult case uh, why should there be any particular concerns? Um, and we'll come back to that topic in a moment. Um, we've had a question already about uh, gender, uh, and it's interesting to see there's a similar proportion of, of uh, male to female ratio representations in different phases, in the three different phases of the study, or an anaesthetic. Um, The, uh, the preponderance of emergency or, or urgent cases um, probably won't come as a surprise and maybe is understandable in terms of it featuring more heavily in the induction section. So about half of those uh, patients reporting awareness 
um, during the induction phase uh, were having an emergency procedure. Uh, maybe the most important aspect of that is that 50% of them weren't. They were having a routine process. In terms of fears about an, uh, airway management or dosage judgment, um, being overweight was a small feature uh, and it's interesting that it relates to the induction phase, the emergence phase, uh, but apparently no difference during the maintenance phase. And to go along with Professor Wang's comments about neuromuscular blockade, uh, although I haven't quoted the maintenance rate, at induction emergence, the vast, vast majority of patients were paralysed. So here we are. Uh, induction and maintenance uh, is in reality unattended in awareness during neuromuscular blockade. We, we've accepted that. Uh, but emergence clearly the opposite, where you have unintended neuromuscular blockade during awareness intended. Perhaps we forget that sometimes. So in, it, it, we could spend a whole day talking about just this next slide, um, and I'm sure I won't be allowed to. Uh, the concept of a gap, there are a number of gaps that may appear in an anaesthetic, um, and we use this phrase to describe uh, a number of scenarios where, for instance, after giving an intravenous agent, uh, the expectation that it will be followed perhaps by a volatile inhalational technique, um, there is some changeover in the technique involved. Therefore, there's the risk of an overdose or a risk of an underdose. And the same applies at any stage where you disconnect the airway or move the patient or there's some interruption in, uh, in care. Um, some processes involved in the transfer into theatre are by themselves apparent. The patient is no longer breathing a... a, a um, a volatile agent, perhaps, uh, but there are processes involved in the care in re establishing anesthesia that may easily be overlooked. Um, I'm sure there'll be a chance later to talk about some of the details in that. There's a major feature about underdosing. Mm, about half the cases, this was a planned event during the um, maintenance phase for sure. Um, of course, underplanned, un unplanned maintenance, sorry, uh, un unplanned underdosing, either during an induction or a maintenance phase, uh, may be related to vaporizer misuse, not, not switching it on or using an empty vaporizer. That's probably the most common individual event. Um, the conversations that will undoubtedly ensue about opioid usage, rapid sequence induction techniques, thiopentone ratio compared with propofol, uh, it's important that we start those conversations, but there's no way that this study will be able to answer them uh, in one go. During maintenance, uh, we, there are clearly situations where a gap may occur, uh, but at the bottom of this section, a proportion of patients significantly we were unable to establish why they were aware. I don't want this to be the start of a difficult anaesthesia society, um, <laughs> but clearly there may, be, there may be a proportion of patients in whom it is harder than others, irrespective of their alcohol consumption or other drug um, issues. An emergence um, and the slide will come later to define this, but uh, the, the lack of use of a nerve stimulator at any stage in patients during recovery from their, or emergence from their anaesthetic, where we've just stated that 93 or 94% of them had a neuromuscular block. Um, you can predict that there will be a proportion where we get it wrong, and they're represented in this study, 88%. This is the only example of patient history I'm going to give. I can see it, I'm sorry. Um, an elderly overweight patient underwent general anaesthesia for major orthopaedic surgery. There was unexpected airway difficulty and the vaporizer was turned off to avoid pollution during indu intubation. Induction with propofol, midazolam, fentanyl and atricurium and then sevoflurane for maintenance. Bag and mask ventilation was easy, but laryngoscopy, laryngoscopy was difficult. Help was summoned. 
the lack of volatile was recognised when the blood pressure was noticed to be elevated during the insertion of a, um, an uh, intubating laryngeal mask. Airway management lasted 45 minutes, which probably indicates the severity of difficulty. Um, and then there's this. It was unclear whether the plan was to wake the patient up or to continue. And it's therefore not a surprise that the patient might be at risk of episode of awareness. The patient were told in recovery that they had heard voices, sensations, and airway manipulation. No pain associated with this report. Although the proportion of patients reporting awareness during the emergence phase was relatively small, the degree of distress, again in the top line of the table, increases as you go through. Um, if that's not a worrying enough phenomenon for the people not worrying about the end of the case, uh, the bottom two lines uh, indicate also something about quality of care. There are 23 recommendations that have been distilled endlessly, uh, and I'm not going to trouble you with them all at once. Please read through the three chapters to get them. And 15 research implications um, were, were noted. Um, and I'm going to put that with a caution, that inevitably we have been considering the issues around avoiding awareness having the luxury of extracting that from the other realities of practice that you have, uh, ensuring the patient actually survives to the end of the operation. Um, but uh, the flip side of that is that until NAP5 came along, I'm not aware of very many pressures on the anaesthetist except those to use less anaesthetic, hurry up, uh, avoid anaesthesia for this, that and the other. So there is inevitably, as time goes on, more and more pressure on the anaesthetist to risk awareness. In summary for the recommendations, um, I, I apologise if these are pretty straightforward, but the reality is uh, it's just, there are some elements that are pretty straightforward to deal with. However, the choice of drug uh, and the use of drugs is what we do all day long. Uh, we need to carry on considering that rather than uh, just accepting what's gone before. The use of checklists is becoming a more prominent feature in medicine for sure, uh, but we need to develop those uh, specifically now to help avoid awareness. And uh, that can be tied in with an improvement in communication in theatres generally. Um, there are a few reports uh, that have been described in the, in the report that uh, could clearly have been avoided. <coughs> the use of the nerve stimulator, that message is clear. How you choose to use these things in your own practice is something you need to discuss in your own departments. Uh, available reassurance should be, must be, part of an immediate action plan if you think your patient is encountering <coughs> episode of awareness. Uh, thank you for listening, and please encourage your colleagues to read the report. <coughs>